Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. I will now proceed with the second part of the preparation of consolidated statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income for our group of company Ideal Berhad. And um, in the second video, we'll be doing this part, which is part B and part C. And uh, part B and part C is to complete the consolidated statement of profit or loss with the adjustment that were uh, included in this additional information where applicable right so let's look at our uh, the uh, template that i have already prepared earlier on we did this uh, combination where we combine the income and the expenses uh, of the uh, parent with those of the subsidiary so now we will look at the adjustment that will need to be done the consolidation adjustment which is focusing on the intercompany transaction that need to be removed in the preparation of consolidated statement of financial position it needs to be adjusted all right so for the uh, first uh, item turnover what you need to look is to check if there is any intercompany sale so if you can re recall uh, what we have not this one sorry If you can still recall in our question, right, this is the one. You have information three. Information three is about the intercompany sales earlier on when you remove the sale that will affect the uh, consolidated statement of profit or loss, the line item for the turnover as well as cost of sale. This is to remove intercompany sale, which is to the point of view of the seller, Fitri, the subsidiary, and to the point of view of the uh, buyer, uh, ideal. Um, for this part, for your information, uh, that will affect both cost of sale and sales. And for the unrealized profit of uh, 10,000, that is uh, because the 40,000 is the profit and the quarter of goods were unsold. So that will be removed in the cost of sale. So remove in the cost of sale or adjusted in the cost of sale is uh, where the uh, inventory uh, will not be uh, reflected there because this is item that will affect your uh, soft fee. So let's look at what we I have done for that part. So we have done this, right? So let's just do that here. Okay. So the first one is the intercompany sale. The second one is the intercompany purchase adjusted in the cost of sale. The unrealized profit added because we debit just now, right? to the um, cost of sale. This is for unrealized profit on closing inventory. If you come across unrealized profit on opening inventory, the, you should done the reverse. So now the figure is 710 and 5.4 million respectively because of the information number three. So now we go to number the information, uh, the things on selling and distribution. There are no adjustment because there are no intercompany transaction relating to selling and distribution. Next one is admin expenses. Admin expenses, you have information for that will affect the admin expenses since the um, goodwill uh, is being impaired. So when you debit your impairment loss that is normally included in the admin expenses or you have an alternative of showing a line item just for the impairment of goodwill. But as for what I'm recommending is to go and adjust them in the admin expenses. You go and add that goodwill impairment that has not been uh, adjusted for and that will be eight percent of three hundred thousand so when you debit your income is not affected but your expenses will have to be added by 24 and uh, the credit part will not be uh, shown because that was to, supposed to be done in the consolidated statement of financial position okay here you have the information that has been adjusted in this section you don't have to write the uh, items uh, that you have adjusted but you just need to go and adjust the figure and the second th thing that need to be adjusted in the admin expenses is the information number uh not information number four but those that relates to the question here this part where if you look um there were some line item here professional fee income from ideal so ideal uh, is the one that is paying and uh, fitri is the one that is um, 
uh, earning the income. So to Fitri, there was an income, but to Ideal, there was an expense. And this is an intra-group uh, service fee income expense because that was intra-group transaction uh, that has to be eliminated. So you will have to remove completely the 4,000 and the professional fees shouldn't be reported. At the same time, in the admin expenses under the Ideal, it has to be removed with that same 4000 so the admin expenses will be deducted with another 4000 and the professional fees income will also be eliminated completely with that uh, intercompany transaction however there are if there are any income that you receive from external parties um, let's say dividend income or any other income rental income from external parties outside the third party that should be or must be reported what we exclude is the intercompany or intra-group transaction as what we have here so you have eliminated the intercompany fees from ideals um, income uh, ideal expenses and from uh, fitri's section here it the four thousand will also be eliminated so therefore it removes the intercompany service fee the next item that need to be also removed is the income from subsidiary by way of dividend and this income is redeemable preference dividend redeemable preference dividend is part of finance cost to the uh, company that is declaring so here fitri is the one that declare so that has already been included in the figure 150000 the dividend of 100000 that we earlier calculated this dividend This dividend here, this 100,000 here. I take a different color. All right, let me just. This 24, oh, my highlighter is not working. So I'll just use my pen then. Okay, so this, this 100,000 actually is the one that has been included in the in uh, in the uh, finance cost but what we need to remove is the intercompany transaction which is the amount payable to to the uh, parent so to the parent you will remove the income to the subsidy you will remove this 30000 which is part of the finance cost so you are you doing it here and that will now leave the uh, redeemable preference dividend that will receive from the group members, which is the subsidiary, to be now be zero. Why zero? You eliminate the intercompany transaction, and at the same time, right? Uh, that has also been need to be eliminated here in the finance cost. So you eliminate the intercompany preference dividend that were paid to the parent. So you have two hundred and eighty thousand. So for the taxation, no adjustment. You just need to add the one of the parent with the one of the subsidiary. Uh, for the profit after tax, the figure should be 1986. And you need to look at the other comprehensive income. The other comprehensive income that will be included in the preparation of consolidated statement of profit or loss here should be the one that is the one in the current year. The one of the parent plus the one of the subsidiary but in our case here if you go to the statement there are no other comprehensive income that were shown in the question if you look at this section right so there are no other comprehensive income or the revaluation surplus at the bottom here however there are some uh, land that will be revalued so this surplus of land of ideal must be disclosed in the other comprehensive income if let's say fitri also has the same or similar surplus let's say 100000 some portion of it must be reported in the other comprehensive income but in our case none just the one of ideal so all 200000 will be reported as part of other comprehensive income so that will appear under ideals column 
um, there are no adjustment here. So the information or the amount would be 200,000. And now you have the to total for the total comprehensive income of 2186. 2186. Right. And your profit for the year or profit after tax is 1986. Right. Now the next thing is to look at the split of the profit after tax between the parent, how much is attributable to the parent and how much is attributable to the non-controlling interest. So meaning that this 186, we are going to see how much belongs to the subsidiary, um, belongs to the non-controlling interest and how much belongs to the parent. So I'm going to find out this using working number one. So working number one is to look at how much is the profit attributable to the non-controlling interest because not all profit is attributable to the parent. So this can be done by um, by knowing what should be adjusted. So what should be adjusted would be okay would be this uh, figure that need to be shown based on the template that I have prepared. If you can see here, I have pro pro uh, provided some working. So these are the things that you should consider. This, these are the common items that you may come across when you need to do adjustment. So what you will adjust would normally be the one that affect the subsidiary's profit in the current year. For example, if there are any current year over provision that were incurred by the subsidiary, any unrealized profit where the subsidiary is the seller that happened, the current year under provision where the subsidiary is the one that is under providing the depreciation, or these are what you have learned in the previous topic, which is the consolidated statement of financial position, and whatever affecting the subsidiary in the current year so we're going to find out actually this triple f so let's look at that and um, whatever adjustment that affect the subsidy and then one more thing that need to be included is to look at what are the profit available to the preference shareholder profit to the preference shareholder is by way of preference dividend so you need to check if there is any preference dividend that are uh, in within the category of equity in our case, if you notice, the preference dividend of the subsidiary is a finance cost. So that will not be included. However, if later you come across the preference dividends that are a preference, which are not redeemable preference dividend, so that will have to be included. We want to uh, look at how much relates to the uh, equity holder of the parent and also how much relates to the equity holder in the non-controlling interest group. Okay, so we'll be doing that for uh, profit attributable to the non control interest and also to the total comprehensive income. So I've done it here. First, the profit after tax uh, that you are going to calculate would be, take the profit after tax of the subsidiary. This is from the question. The question is here. Profit after tax of the subsidiary would be 920,000. So that 920,000 you will include here. Right. And then the adjustment to the subsidies in the current year. So when we were doing our adjustment earlier on, we noticed that adjustment that affect the subsidiary, there are two adjustments. One is number three, this. Another one is no, uh, number five, which is the transfer to general reserve. But transfer to general reserve happened in the statement of changes in equity. We will not be doing it here. But what uh, this one has been recorded. We will not do it uh, as well. And this preference dividend is related to redeemable preference shares. So what we're going to do is to also adjust this um, unrealized profit in the non controlling interest so you get to adjust the unrealized profit also in the non-controlling interest section and you need to go and remove that because the subsidiary is the seller however if the subsidiary is not the seller the parent is the seller you do not need to do the adjustment okay we'll be doing that here 
right? The annualized profit, when such rate is the seller, if the parent is a seller, it will not be included. And what you adjust is the one happening in the current year. Uh, the next one is the preference dividend. I'm putting it, but we, we don't have a figure here. Why? Because this preference dividend is a redeemable preference dividend. Since this is redeemable preference dividend, so you will not go and uh, appropriate from the current year profit. It is already included when you calculate your profit before tax, you have already charged the dividend, right? So you have already accounted for. This will be the case if this is preference dividend from cumulative preference shares or other types of preference shares. So done with that, if you have any other adjustment affecting the subsidies uh, profit, then it has to be adjusted. So the profit attributable to the ordinary shareholder or the one due to equity holder, this is the equity holder in the parent, would be the figure here, 910. And you are going to look at how much is attributable to the non-controlling interest, 30%. And that would give the figure 273. So this 273 would be reported, would be reported here, 273. So therefore, the one attributable to the parent would be the difference between 1986 and 273. And that was 1713. And this is the one that will later be reported in the consolidated statement of changes in equity. Next is the profit attributable to the uh, total comprehensive income attributable to uh, equity holder and also the non-controlling interest. The total comprehensive income is is 2186 which is from here and our duty is to find the non-controlling interest. Here it is exactly the same because there are no uh, non uh, no other comprehensive income that relate to the subsidiary. So if you look at the working here, profit attributable here is the one that you have already calculated earlier, 273. So I just put some color to highlight, okay, 273. There were no revaluation surplus of subsidiary in current year. The revaluation surplus is the one of the parent, so you won't report that. You will just report if it's the, of the subsidiary and you are going to take the portion of the um, non-controlling interest in this uh, revaluation surplus by here none. Right? So therefore none, it, it means that the figure here is 273 as well. So this 273 because no adjustment. Okay, this 273 here. We have to include here, 273, okay, from here. And here, because it, there is no adjustment. If there is some adjustment, the figure may not be the same. So you are done with that. 